before lasting peace can be experienced, it must be known. You must know Jesus personally, objectively, and we're going to talk about it. The peace of God speaks to having peace with God. Let's talk about what it means to have peace with God. That's very, very important because one hinges on the other. You cannot have the peace of God unless you have peace with God. Now, you say, I already got that, Pastor. Well, sometimes if you meditate on the things that you say you got, uh, somebody needs to hear this. When you meditate on the things in which you got, let me ask you a question. If your children, who you love with all your heart, start spending more and more time telling you how much they love you and how much they appreciate you, and they spend an inordinate amount of time reminding you of how many things you did for them, even when you didn't have to, even though, even though you couldn't even afford it. But they keep telling you about how good you are and how great you are. No matter what you think about them being a handkerchief head or a low, no account, an irresponsible child, I think they would bring a smile to your face because they're talking about you and what you handkerchief head. You don't know what that is? I'll tell you about that after Bible class. Praise the Lord. The peace of God speaks to having peace with God. It speaks to not being at odds with God, and not being hostile with God, being in harmony with God, being reconciled with God, being brought back based upon a payment of a debt. There is no peace between the sinner and God without some kind of reconciliation. You had to be brought back. Look at Isaiah 57, verse number 20. See, some of these things, saints of God, gives you a better appreciation of what God has done for you, and that's when peace comes in. Remember, it passes all understanding. That's what the text says. I don't understand why all of this is coming against me. I want to pass your understanding. Oh, you didn't get that. I don't understand all this. He said, I want to pass your understanding. I want to go beyond your feeble brain. And I want to show you, if you just do the things that I tell you to do, I'll bring peace to you in a way you never knew. Say, say amen. I told you to go to where, Isaiah? Isaiah? Isaiah 57 and verse number 20 and 21. If you're there, say amen. amen. But the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. Say amen. amen. I don't care how much a person who is out of a relationship with God, I don't care how much they shoot drugs, I don't care how many illicit affairs they have, I don't care how much money they spend, they will not have inner peace. They will have temporary peace. You look at their life and you say, oh, I wish I had a little bit of what they have, but you don't know how they live. You don't know the inner turmoil that they're experiencing. Because there's only one kind of lasting peace, and it only comes through Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. But just in case you say, well, that's not my situation, Pastor. I'm a believer, so that applies to the unbeliever. Ah, we got another challenge for you as a believer. Ah, look at Romans chapter 8, verse number 7. You're going to let your fingers do a little walking. Romans 8, number 7, and remember Paul was talking about believers here. He's talking to believers, and he's talking about the mindset. He's talking about the mindset of the believer, and their mindset, if it's spiritual, is life and peace. For the mindset of the carnal person is sin and death, and look what this text says. He's talking to believers now. He's not talking about unbelievers here. He said, because the carnal mind is what? Enmity, that word means hostile against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh can what? Not please God. I don't care how much you say you love God. If you're walking in the flesh, you are not pleasing to him. 
I told you this before. There are two texts that seem to be very explicit in the New Testament about things that don't please God. One is not having faith because without it you cannot please God. And here's the second one. When you walk in the flesh, you cannot please God. Then he goes on to say, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Then he makes a clarion call for the necessity of the Holy Spirit. Unless a man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Why am I making such a tremendous emphasis on that text? Because, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot know God and therefore cannot know peace unless you have his Spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. You must have his spirit, and those of you who have his spirit, you must cultivate his spirit daily so he will dwell in you richly. Christ will dwell in your heart by faith, and you will be rooted and grounded in love and be able to comprehend with all the believers what is the breadth, length, depth, and height. To know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge. Shout hallelujah. 